not sure how to begin. What I'm about to tell you isn't necessarily about me, nor do I have any right to tell. Still, I'll do it anyway. What's the purpose? Mm, I have no clue. Perhaps to give you a better understanding of myself. It was a fine summer day during the Great Depression, one of the bitter days of my youth. I breathed in and out, relishing the warmth bestowed by the big yellow star. The gentle wind brushed against my skin, adding a peaceful element to the giggles of the cheerful children from the nearby orphanage. I had only relief for a short time by then, so I was slightly dim with it. All the children around the area were bright and jolly, despite the tragedy enveloping the nation. Hence, when one little girl displayed queer conduct, I was intrigued. Her name was Madeline. She was quiet and wise beyond her age. While the other kids were chasing each other on the grassland, she would trot to me and chose to read a book. I also noticed that she was able to read difficult books, ones without pictures. Her stoic demeanor set her apart from her peers. Hugging the handed down Oliver Twist book, she approached me and read, enjoying her own company. She had been born with a weak body, she told me, which made it difficult for her to join the other kids as physical activities would strain her body. Every time her body weakened, she'd be trapped inside the house. There was Agnes, the thoughtful caretaker of the orphanage, who had taught Madeline to read. She was also the one who had given Madeline her treasured book. Agnes had tried her best to attend to Madeline's emotional needs to make her feel less lonely. However, the orphanage was suffering from shortages, both in manpower and financial resources. Agnes had to assume numerous roles to support the orphanage that resulted in Madeline's self-reliance most of the time. I would see her peeking through the window. She would crestfallen, and this happened often. Therefore, when she was in tip-top condition, she'd spend her time outside. Madeline had told me that she had better chances to live a normal life in the city, where the doctors were better than in a rural area like this. But. As an orphanage, it relied solely on people's charity. And the massive economic downfall had robbed people of the luxury to be generous. Alas, most people had had a hard time bringing bread to their own table. The unemployment rate had been at an all-time high. Men had wandered around the street with signage on their chest, almost pleading for a job. Mrs. Wilson, the owner of the orphanage, had expressed her intention to close down the orphanage. Agnes, her niece, had been downright against it. But Aunt Bertha, if we shut the orphanage, where will the children go? She would argue. Mrs. Wilson was a callous and austere woman. The only reason she had kept the orphanage was that it had been her husband's inheritance. 
His last testament stated his wish for Mrs. Wilson to continue taking care of orphans in the orphanage. Mr. Wilson had been very passionate about children. Sadly, the Wilson couple had not been granted a kid of their own. Thus, Mrs. Wilson had built the orphanage to express his sentiment. Following the Black Thursday that had happened six years ago, Sunderland had been crippled by a severe economic crash. The orphans were forced to help in any way they could. Some of them mended the farm, which had disappointing results due to the waves of the dust bowl. Some of them attended to the animals. Mrs. Wilson would spare a quarter of the meal for the orphans and the rest to be sold in the city. The children had little awareness about the ongoing global situation, but I overheard the adults agonizing about the United States' potential involvement in the war. Although President Roosevelt had maintained neutrality in the European war, Agnes was worried that the United States would soon get dragged into it. But it wouldn't happen until two years later when Japan hit Pearl Harbor. Mrs. Wilson demonstrated a slight inclination toward Germany. It was faced with heavy opposition from Agnes, who condemned the Nazis' deeds to the neighboring countries. Anyway, the financial crisis perturbed the orphanage. Mrs. Wilson gave each kid a sales quota that they had to achieve for the day. She would let the children play after they had fulfilled the preposterous target. Only a handful of kids could meet her expectations. Those lacking in sales would attempt pickpocketing to avoid Mrs. Wilson's wooden wallet. As you could expect, Madeline couldn't join the petite trading force because of her health issues. Consequently, Madeline became the thorn in Mrs. Wilson's side. Mrs. Wilson treated her as a weed that she'd like to trim. Madeline did her best to help out with house chores, the farm, and the animals. It wasn't enough though as Mrs. Wilson would need big, tiny details. Madeline would always be the scapegoat for any wrong in the house. Ah, <sighs> how I wish I could save her from the hand of an uncaring adult like Mrs. Wilson. Thankfully, there was Agnes. She was ready to throw her body to shield Madeline. However, she had her own issue to face. Agnes was evicted from her family because she refused an arranged marriage. Mr. Wilson had taken her in and cared for her until his last breath. With Mr. Wilson's absence, Agnes couldn't defy Mrs. Wilson recklessly. She couldn't risk being chased out of the orphanage too. And Bertha, I suppose she has understood the lesson. I'll see to it that she does better tomorrow. She would say. One day, Madeline dragged her feet toward me with her face drenched in tears. She whimpered in silence as she opened her worn-out book. Did Mrs. Wilson beat her up again? Not long after, Agnes ran after the child. She tended to Madeline's bruises with a damp towel. Madeline fixed her gaze on Agnes and asked, 
Miss Agnes, does Mrs. Wilson hate me because I'm weak? Agnes shook her head frantically. <laughs> Mrs. Wilson doesn't hate you, love. She's confused. Madeline creased her forehead. Confused? Of what? Agnes smiled and caressed Madeline's chin gently. Of the world. After her husband dies, she has no one to hold on to. The current condition isn't good for the orphanage. We're desperately trying to keep the orphanage, but we don't have the resources for that. As you can see, the farm isn't doing well. Agnes' explanation discounted a lot of information from Madeline. I was grateful that she chose her words carefully. It won't do Madeline any good to know that Mrs. Wilson was not kind. <sighs> Poor Mrs. Wilson. Madeline muttered as she played with her fingers. Moved by the young maiden's tender heart, Agnes dashed to the orphanage and returned some time later with something in her hand. She gave Madeline a music box. Hey, listen to this when you're troubled. It shall lift your spirit a little. Agnes said. Madeline's eyes brimmed with excitement and gratitude. After Agnes retreated to the house, Madeline got up and stretched her hands. She tried to take me into her embrace, but her short hands could only reach a quarter of my trunk. She closed her eyes and whispered. I am so happy with the new music box. I am also happy with the old book. But I am the happiest with you, Mr. Tree. Yes, that's me. I'm a tree that lives near Madeline's orphanage.